Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a Boeing 737 pilot and on this video I'm going to show you how to manage being high on the descent profile and which techniques you can use to efficiently recover. Now, there are plenty of reasons why you might be high on profile. For example, ATC may not grant you descent clearance, but whatever the reason is, the techniques how to get back onto profile are usually more or less similar. Now, Looking into the uh, flight crew training manual and into a couple of um, additional documents together with experience from the line, these are the techniques I would normally be using. Now, first of all, the techniques we are going to use will vary depending on if we are high on altitude or if we are low on altitude. Personally, I would use a difference of about flight level 150 to make the difference here. However, you can use flight level 100 as a hard limit if you like to. Now, let's start with the obvious. If you are low on profile, simply reduce your rate of descent using vertical speed mode or VNAV mode and it will get you back on a profile. So far so easy. But if you are high on profile, above flight level 100, let's say more above level 150 because from flight level 150 onwards it won't make much of a difference anymore. There are two possible techniques on how to get back on profile. If we are flying a typical cost index that uh, flight simos would be using, let's say cost index 30 as I am right now, we're getting a target speed of 273 knots in the descent. That leaves us plenty of room to increase the target speed which in turn is going to cause more drag during the descent due to the higher airspeed and therefore will make our path steeper. So the first and obvious solution if you are above the path is to increase the target speed and that is going to increase your rate of descent as well, making the path steeper and just therefore bring you closer back to it. Now. If that is not possible for whatever reason, you can use level change mode to increase speed up to a maximum of 330 knots on Mach 0.81. However, be very careful not to overspeed your airplane. Even with minor turbulence as we see it right now, you can see the speed varying a tiny bit over here. I would personally not exceed 320 knots or Mach 0.79. Now, the option of just increasing the target speed is usually used when you have a long distance to cover. For example, I'm going to show you in a few moments that we are going to overfly the top of descent point and then we still have a long way to cover to our destination. If you are close to a speed restriction or close to an altitude restriction, there may be no room to actually maneuver to increase your rate of descent by increasing your airspeed. Keep in mind, we want to do all of this with the engines at idle, otherwise we would kind of miss the point of recovering from a high energy profile. So let's talk about being at a lower altitude then. If you're high on profile below approximately flight level 150, we need to differentiate. So between level 150 and level 100, technically speaking, you could still pitch down to increase your airspeed. but you are going to be at the increased speed for such a short period of time that the additional drag will hardly have any effect and air traffic control is most likely planning a sequence for you at the airspeed that you're currently flying. So if you increase airspeed that is not really going to help anymore. So let's assume that below level 150 we are already speed limited to 250 knots and below flight level 100 most certainly we are. If that happens, well, then the speed brake is your only option. Well, not quite. So, your speed brake is, of course, the first obvious option, but the speed brake in the 737 is not that effective. So, for example, when you're doing 250 knots from the default 1700 feet a minute rate of descent that Boeing says you have, it will increase to approximately 2300, which is an okayish effect, but if you're doing only the uh, flaps up maneuvering speed and then you increase the speed brake, you're only going to gain approximately 300 feet a minute rate of descent. So you can see that does not really help you all that much. So what can we do then? Well, 
The obvious solution, if you cannot speed up, is to slow down. And now you might say, wait a moment, but if we slow down, that means we are going to use less drag, don't we? And that is true for as long as you forget about the speed brakes. However, the speed brakes are exactly what makes the difference here. So, speed brake and flaps. So, if you are at a low altitude and you're high on profile, just slow the plane down, 220 knots, flaps 5, makes for a perfect descent at about 2300 feet a minute with a speed brake extended and that is going to give you the steepest profile you can achieve so 220 knots flaps 5 speed brakes the next setting then would be 180 knots flaps 10 speed brake but that is not as steep as the previous okay so we are overflying the um top of descent right now but let's assume air traffic control has not given us descent clearance you can see the uh, VNAV marker running down and the FMC has entered energy compensation profile. But let's say that we are not even allowed to do that. So we need to maintain both our Mach number and um, our altitude due to traffic. So we're getting high on profile right now. And I'm going to let this run for a little while until we reach about, let's say, 3000 feet vertical deviation over here. Now. I don't want to give you an exact vertical deviation and speed combination here because you have to play with this a little bit in order to gain your own experience of what you are able to recover and what not. So we have 2000 feet vertical deviation right now, I'm gonna give it a little bit more. However, taking the previous explanations into account, what would you say is the best option of what to do here? I believe you guessed it by now. The best option right now is just to increase the target speed for the descent. So, let's do that. Right now, we have 3000 feet a minute deviation. Let's say ATC now gives us our descent clearance to flight level 150. That 150 checked. BNAF. Okay, so. By default, VNAV mode is simply going to parallel the descent path, which we are 4,000 feet above right now. However, let's try to get back onto that path. The obvious solution is simply to increase the target speed. Note, we do not want to use the speed brake if we don't have to, because the speed brakes basically destroy energy, therefore they waste fuel. If we are high on profile as we are right now, and we used the speed brake, that would mean we would get back down onto the path, but we would be flying for longer. The engines would be running in idle for a longer time, and even in idle, the engines are using quite a bit of fuel, as you can see. Therefore, we have already invested that energy. We used the engines to stay up at altitude, so let's make use of that energy by increasing our airspeed and thereby reducing the time that we are going to fly. So we are quite a bit above the profile, so I'm going to increase speed dr drastically here. Let's start at 300 knots, see what that is going to give us. VNAV is initially going to calculate for a bit, but as you can see, it has now made its calculation, and we are only 400 feet above the profile now, for 300 knot descent. So what initially seemed like a great deviation, all of a sudden isn't that bad anymore. Now, we can catch that little bit up by going 305 knots for example let's put that in give it a moment to calculate but as you can see we are already below the path let's take 302 then 302 and here we go and like this the airplane it's probably going to catch the path again. We have a bit of speed to uh, gain over here. And that is basically the end of this exercise already. If you want to be really precise, then you could play around with the numbers a little bit in order to intercept the path precisely. Or you just wait and see what happens. Chances are VNAV is never entirely accurate, so if you, we are just 200 feet above it, it's eventually going to capture it, most likely.
let me now show you the effect of an early speed reduction on a profile like this. And as you can see, we just got our Venus path capture over here. So now the airplane is following the path once again. So this technique, as nice as it is, is limited mostly by how soon you actually have to slow the airplane down again. And this is something that I want to show you now. So let's assume that over here at Isoru we would have a speed restriction. As we can see, the actual restriction is 20 miles after Isoru at Totco, 250 knots. But let's say we have the 250 knot restriction at Isoru. Let's put 250 knots or less. Insert. And what you are going to see is that we will immediately be high on profile again, because all of a sudden the airplane needs to reduce the speed earlier, and therefore we are flying the higher speed and therefore the higher drag for a shorter period of time. As you can see, we are now 1600 feet high on profile. Now let me show you what is going to happen if I increase the target speed to the maximum that we can safely do, 330 knots. And as you can see, we got a little bit closer to the target profile, but it's still a 1,100 feet of difference. So the increase from 300 to 330 knots, while it drastically increases our drag, is not making all that much of a difference on the path. And the reason for it is because we have to lose all the airspeed again. You can see how the deceleration point came further towards our position, so while we can now descend even steeper than we could previously, we also have to start the speed reduction earlier. So if you are close to a waypoint where you have a speed restriction, then chances are increasing the speed is not going to help all that much. As you can see, we are now doing 330 knots and we are paralleling the path about 500 feet above the path. So in this situation, the only help we can get is by using the speed brake. Therefore, let's get that speed brake out, and you are going to notice that when we are doing 330 knots, the speed brake will be super effective. And the reason for that is actually easily explained. If we just go to the uh, wing view for a second. Interesting, was the plane flying upside down for a second? Okay, let's go to the wing view. So over here we see the speed brake in action. You can imagine that with the high speed that we are flying right now, there is a lot more air that is smashing against that speed brake and therefore the speed brake has a lot more drag than it would have at lower air speeds. So let's go back into our flight deck. And we can see we are already back on path and losing air speed. So my speed brake is stowed again and now we are flying. So let's delete that speed restriction once again. Gone it is. And now of course we are low on profile once again because we just destroyed some energy. So we can play the game again, we can reduce our airspeed. Let's say 300 knots. Still low on profile. Let's try back to let's try to go back to Econ speed. And what you notice now is that the changes we see on the VNAV deviation scale as we change our target airspeeds are not all that great anymore. And the reason for that is that the lower we are, the less long the effect of the changed drag due, due to our changed speed is going to be. Also a particularity of the 737 as we come along is that when you're doing a thousand feet a minute below the path as you're trying to recapture that path, the airplane will barely lose speed. Now in the high speed regime where we are flying right now, the difference is still visible, like we at least have a trend vector there. But if you are at a low altitude and trying to capture your path, then chances are you might need to use vertical speed mode and give it something like 300 feet a minute rate of descent in order to keep your continuous descent approach, or just level the airplane out entirely in order to lose your airspeed. There is a little bit of Boeing guidance about deceleration in level flight in the flight crew training manual, which I want to tell you now. If you need to decelerate the 737NG from 280 knots to 250 knots in level flight, that is going to take approximately 25 seconds and 2 nautical miles. Decelerating from 250 knots to the flaps up maneuvering speed 
takes approximately 35 seconds and 3 nautical miles. And if you are using the speed brake, those times and distances reduce by approximately 50% compared to not using the speed brake. In case you're interested, the MAX has a little bit higher residual thrust and less drag than the NG, so in the 737 MAX, for decelerating from 280 to 250 knots, it takes 30 seconds and 2.5 miles, so 5 seconds and half a mile more, and decelerating from the 250 knot speed to the flaps up maneuvering speed takes 55 seconds and 4 nautical miles, which is quite a different from the NG's 35 seconds and 3 nautical miles. So as you can see, quite a difference there. All right, so, as you can see right now, we have caught back our path, we barely used any thrust, and we are back on the Econ speed right here. Now, to summarize this chapter, and before going into the next one, let's quickly recap. If you are high on path and you have a long distance to go, simply increasing your target speed is going to increase your um, descent angle and therefore going to save time and fuel. Now, if you are close to a speed restriction, however, then increasing your speed is not really going to matter all that much anymore because what really matters is the time that you are going to spend at the increased speed and that time is going to be significantly reduced as you fly along on a very short time on that high speed. So close to a speed reduction point. Now let's fast forward a little bit and get closer to the approach so that we can show you how to pick up your profile again if you're getting high below flight level 150 roundabout. So the first thing we'll do is we are going to level off at 14,000 feet of flight level 140 over here. That is set on the MCP altitude. I will quickly let the airplane level off over here and then we'll take a manual speed restriction from A to C of 250 knots. And in this configuration let's head a little bit closer to the airport. What we do want to do is to try and keep the VNAV profile as up-to-date as possible by inserting a route in the FMC that more or less closely reflects the expected approach path. For example, we are approaching Gran Canaria right now and the star would normally, after Golf Delta Victor VOR over here, lead to Lima Papa Charlie VOR, which is somewhere over here. However, based on experience I have flying to this airport, I know that normally after Golf Delta Victor we get a heading of about 160 degrees, we fly over the airfield and then they vector us to a downwind. By inserting this in the FMC, I'm getting a VNAV profile that more or less closely reflects what we're actually expecting and therefore I'm getting good VNAV guidance. Now, for the purpose of this video, however, Let's assume that air traffic control is cutting us short a little bit. They're giving us a heading of 180 degrees, but they keep us high because we're still flying above the departure sector. Well, let's update the VNOF profile, as I said, so that we more or less get to see what ATC plans to do with us. It is also a good idea to ask them for the track mileage so that you have an idea of um, how high you are and calculate your profile yourself. So 14 times 3 gives us the rough distance and 14 times 3 is uh, 42. Plus we need to lose 50 knots, so 5 miles extra makes it 47 miles and we have a tailwind here of 10 knots plus 1 mile, 48 miles. Now when we look at the fixed page, we can see we have 46 miles to run right now. So whatever the VNOC profile says, we know that we are currently about 600 feet too high because we are two miles too close for our profile. Enough actually even calculates 4,000 feet almost here, but let's not try. It. Let's not trust Wiener faults. We 
preset MCP altitude is checked, but ATC doesn't give us descent clearance yet. But okay, let's assume that ATC has finally decided to give us a descent clearance. If it is a clearance only for a very short vertical segment, let's say for example we're cleared down to flight level 100 now. We select flight level 100 on the MCP, and there is a couple different ways of how to do this. The first way would simply be to press level change and extend the speed brake. That is going to provide you with an idle thrust descent, however it might not necessarily provide you with the best possible result. So what I would recommend you to do is the following. At this moment you have roughly 3000 feet to go. A little bit more, but let's say roughly 3000. So let's apply the 3 to 1 rule. Go vertical speed. And let's give us 3,000 feet a minute. Depending on how far it still is to your destination airport, you may or may not want to use the speed brake with this. But by using vertical speed now, we ensure that we go down with the maximum possible rate of descent, while still gaining a little bit of airspeed. The reason why I'm doing it like this is because I know that when we slow down our rate of descent as we are approaching 10,000 feet, I can simply let the speed bleed off. So now we are approaching 2,000 to go, so I'm using 2,000 feet a minute, and you can see how our acceleration from the previous rate of descent slowly stops. And as we approach 1,000 to go, we're going to use 1,000 feet a minute, and then our speed is slowly going to come back. This way we've had an idle thrust descent and we've been flying a tiny bit faster, thereby saving a tiny bit of fuel. So, approach level 100, one to go, and now that we're doing a thousand feet a minute, our speed is slowly going to start reducing. Of course, if air traffic control clears you down further in this very moment, let's assume they clear us down to um, 7,000 feet right now, we need to abide that 250 knot limitation below level 100. So, in this moment we can just go level change, extend the speed brakes in order to get down, and a good ballpark figure. If you have to fly a 10 nautical mile final and you're being vectored around the airfield, when you beam the field, you want to be at about 7,000 feet and 250 knots. That normally gives you a very nice idle path descent towards a 10 mile final. So, as you can see, we have about 3 miles to run until we rebeam the field. So, 3 miles equals 1,000 feet, that means a beam the field will be at 9,000 feet, so we are currently 2,000 feet high on profile. At this moment, Using the speed brake, we still have a little bit of time, we are still doing a reasonably high speed, like 250 knots. We get the target's rate of descent of about 2300 feet a minute, that Boeing says we should be doing over here. It can always be a tiny bit more or less, that will vary per situation and per aircraft. But we are now doing a fine rate of descent down towards our target altitude. Let's assume we get a further descent now and we go all the way down to the platform of 3,000 feet. So that is 3,000 feet set, and ATC tells us we can expect vectors to a short final. Now, of course we could just say we need additional track miles, but that would not be very economic, would it? So let's set the local altimeter setting, and the next thing we can do now to make our airplane descend is actually reduce our airspeed. So let's go down towards 220 knots, keep the speed brake extended all the time for this, and as soon as we are well below the flap placard speed of 250 knots, we can start extending our flaps. So let's say in this situation we want to go flaps 1. Speed is checked, below 250, and let's go on to a downwind heading. Flaps 1, ok, flaps 5, speed checked, and 
and flaps 5. Okay, so now we're doing 220 knots, flaps 5, and we have the speed break in the flight detent. This gives us roughly 2,000-2,200 feet a minute. And that is the steepest descent profile, or the steepest angle you can get in the 737. As you can see from the flight path vector, we are now doing 5 degrees down, and you are not going to get any steeper than this. And as we can see from the range to uh, altitude banana, we will be level in about 4 miles, which means that we can already accept our base turn. Approaching the base, we should ideally start reducing our airspeed, and seeing that we have quite a bit of tailwind right here, we might really want to do that. So, the next option we have is going 180 knots and flaps 10. However, in a situation like this, be aware that the mileage you need to reduce your airspeed is significantly going to affect your rate of descent. So we are going to get quite high on the profile now and have to capture that later then as we are intercepting the ILS. Also, be aware if you are flying an aircraft that has the short field performance kit installed or not, because if you have an SFP aircraft, then flaps 10 is not going to do very much for you. Then it is better to stay at 220 knots flaps 5, because obviously as you're becoming slower, the additional drag you receive from your flaps will start to decrease. So we are now at 180 knots, flaps 10. And there our glide slope comes alive. Okay, a nice intercept heading here of uh, 360, and we are nicely catching our profile. Cleared for the approach, approach mode armed. And like this, the banana is right on the um, fix, so we should be intercepting the ILS any moment. Local out the capture, fly stop capture. Speed break can go back in. Let's reduce our speed to the flap speed. And that is the entire magic there is. That is how you catch a profile from above in the Boeing 737. I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, then do let me know in the comments below what you are thinking and if you do things any different. Thank you very much for watching. If you do want to support the channel, you can do so either by becoming a channel member, which is going to give you access to specific perks like early access to new videos, or in first class membership even the ability to request new videos directly. If you don't want to become a member, you can always support me through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below, but in any case, like, comment and subscribe. I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one. Thank you very much for your attention, and I'm looking forward to see you all again hopefully very soon.